Hey guys, back at you with another Dermestid Beetle time lapse, this time with a pet tegu that someone has commissioned a skeleton for. Disclaimer, the next few photos are going to be even more graphic than the usual flesh eating videos you've seen on my channel. As you can see pretty immediately, this animal was not very healthy, with very low muscle tone and fat content. The organs are discolored and deflated. This baby lizard actually developed a mysterious infection and crashed really fast. As you can see here, the infection produced a lot of pus that accumulated within the limbs, even making hard lumps in the front legs, making them look artificially engorged. You'll see how all of this pus affected the skeletonization process as it goes on. Right out the bat, don't judge me about the broken tail. I have skinned and dissected a handful of lizards that dropped their tails, and I have never successfully prevented the tail from falling apart. This won't affect the final product, as long as I don't lose any of the tiny pieces. This video is also a good reminder that when you add small items to your beetles, make sure it is in a container or something with a lip on it. Otherwise, the beetles could easily have carried these tail pieces away, and I would never have been able to recover every tiny bone. And here goes the first pussy chunk falling off the arm. Apparently the pus is just as tasty as lizard meat, as you can watch it disappear in a matter of moments. The last time lapse I did on this particular background, the most common asked question was, what is that stuff accumulating on the plastic? Uh, well, it's exactly what you think it is. If it eats, it poops, and you are about to watch a significant amount of beetle poop pile up. At this point, the tail is essentially finished. I honestly did not expect the beetles to chow down on the pus so hard. I expected them to leave it alone and watch it flake off and pile up. I guess it makes sense, though. Pus is an accumulation of white blood cells and other infection-fighting cells in your body, and that's what beetles eat. Animal cells. You can see through the holes forming in the ribs that the entire interior of the tegu is full of dermestids eating from the inside out. There might even be more under there than on the surface because the dermestids prefer the dark crevices of the world over the spotlight of the camera. You can see that outside hand is wiggling quite strongly right now, and it is about to wiggle right off. There it goes, gonna float away, and hopefully I'll notice it before all the fingers come apart and get carried away forever.
They've definitely recruited all of their buddies at this point, and everyone is in on the action. I just wanted to point out the fact that this is my secondary colony, donated and grown from an oddities friend of mine. They are not nearly as large and voracious as my main colony, so they are perfect for smaller projects like this. Come on, man. Those fingers are starting to break off. Come check on the lizard. I'm starting to think that even this colony is too large for such delicate projects. Might have to make an even smaller one. Here I am to save the day, nearly 24 hours later, and collect the floating pieces. I was really nervous because I could tell that this lizard would definitely not stay whole if I left it again overnight. So I set a timer to come back later that night and reset the camera. Notice that this whole process took less than 5 minutes, but it's amazing how different the skeleton looks once all the beetles skedaddled. You can also see that I added some food just off the screen in an attempt to slow down the beetles from destroying the skeleton. If you are upset that the floating hand distraction is gone, rejoice. You can now watch the paper towel slowly absorb all the blood from that rabbit's head. So the other hand has completely lost its fingers. This whole project just became much more difficult than originally anticipated. If you have seen my Bearded Dragon time lapse, which I'll drop a card for in the top corner, this is the exact reason I left the leg skin on, so it would remain intact and I wouldn't have to play puzzle with a bunch of tiny toe bones. Okay, so at this point, I'm coming back, and I have to stop the process. It's late, it won't survive until the morning, and it needs to be micromanaged. Also, there's pus and poo and frass encrusting on this skeleton, so I wanted to give it a gentle rinse before I let a few beetles continue munching on it. I picked up the skeleton and brought it home. It still had a handful of beetles on it, but I don't worry about them. But I should have... I brought the skeleton home from my workshop and I set it down and forgot about it because I was so busy preparing for the Reptilian Nation Expo that weekend. I was assembling skulls, putting wet specimens in jars, and building a display case. The point is, the few beetles in the skeleton container continued munching, and this happened. As you can see, all of the feet and toe bones have been detached and jumbled. I set down the container for a day or two and this is what I get. I discovered this literally immediately before I walked out the door to work the expo. So to immediately stop the process, I just placed the entire container in the freezer. It was a bit of a sacrifice to kill off these leftover beetles in the container, and I will honor them the best I can. Obviously the tegu is still caked in nasty, pussy, poopy sludge, and I still need to give it a rinse and finish off the defleshing very delicately. But that's all for this video. If you want updates on this commission, I suggest you follow my Instagram, at Flockens Necroparlor. You can check out my new Instagram, at The Necroparlor, where I only show finished products for those too squeamish to see the processes involved. I also just started a TikTok, so maybe you can follow me on there and watch me struggle to be a millennial. But if you would like more behind-the-scenes content, bonus videos, and secrets of the trade, 
then I suggest you subscribe to my Patreon account, patreon.com slash Flockens Necroparlor, where I have several tiers with varying degrees of benefits, including sticker packets, exclusive merch, website coupons, and more. These are all of my Patreons currently subscribed. Thank you so much. Without you, the Necroparlor would not be possible. Tune in soon, and I'll eventually save up to get a new camera, where my video quality will be significantly increased. Anyways, that's it for today. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, share a video or two, come see me at the expo, tell your grandma about me, and I'll see you later.